What's up Ocean, you got Matt here, and have you ever thought about using GMAX Duraludon? Well, if you have, this is the perfect video for you. Welcome to episode 4 of our 30 part series on every single GMAX Pokemon. Every episode I have a guest on the channel and we'll discuss how to use a specific GMAX Mon. We'll go over stats, move pools, potential teammates, impact on the Sword and Shield Draft League meta, and in the end, give it a ranking. At the end of the series, I'll be bringing back the top 10s with the top 10 GMAX Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Last episode was on GMAX Lapras, and if you missed it, I'd highly recommend checking it out. The link is in the description. Also, if you want to vote for which Pokemon you'd like to see next, stick around and I'll let you know how to do that. This week, I'm excited to introduce our guest, Mr. Platinum Howler. How's it going? What's up, Ocean? You got Plat here. <laughs> uh, actually, I prefer you not call me Plat. I like to go by Howler. But today I'm very excited to be here to discuss a mod that I've had a lot of fun using in the IBL this season, GMAX Duraludon. Look, I, I'm I'm a culprit. I call you Plat. I apologize, but I'll get it right this time around. Howler it is from now on. So everyone, if you're excited for this video, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment, and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content if you're interested in that sort of thing. Now, Howler, you are currently using GMAX Duraludon in the IBL, and you're demolishing everyone with it. So tell me, what is one thing about it that stands out the most to you? So the thing for me about GMAX Duraludon is its typing. Obviously, Steel Dragon is a phenomenal, phenomenal typing. Adds up to a total of nine resistances, some of which are quad resistances, plus an immunity to poison. And its only weaknesses are to fighting and ground. You don't really want to be switching Duraludon into too many special hits, even if they are resisted hits, because it does have a very, very low base 50 special defense stat. Like, it's still taking 30% from a Scald from your trusty mascot, Melodic, even if it's <laughs> Melodic's non-vested in special attack, so... Um, but the good thing about its typing, and it still has very good physical defense, and fighting and ground moves are most of the time going to be physical attacks. You're not going to be going up against special attacking fighting types or ground types too often, so... Yes, its special defense stat may hold it back a little bit, but it's still is pretty good at taking the hits that it needs to. Honestly, for me, the big thing with Duraludon, my favorite part about it, is that it actually has really respectable speed at 85. You don't see many Pokemon with special attack of 120, insanely powerful moves that Duraludon has, as well as the coverage, and with speed that good while maintaining its natural bulk. So that to me is pretty impressive. Um, it does have a few good abilities, which kind of help boost what it wants to do. Um, mostly, I think Heavy Metal is the biggest one in terms of singles, and then there's Light Metal as a slight backup, but Stalwart is kind of useless for us. Uh, so why don't you talk about how you've used Light Metal and Heavy Metal in your draft league games? Heavy Metal can be good, uh, but really only if you're using a physical attacking set. And its physical attack is... it, it is usable. Base 95 physical attack is usable. Um, it's going to power up the power of Heavy Slam, which uh, if you weren't running Heavy Metal, then you don't want to be running Heavy Slam at all on the Duraludon. I think Light Metal, honestly, is probably what you want to be running on Duraludon most of the time if you're going with the special attacking set, because that means that Low Kick, for example, is a move that it's weak to. But if you're running Light Metal on it, then Low Kick is only going to be 40 base power against Duraludon, which is pretty pathetic. Other than that, you know, its abilities are probably not something to write home about Duraludon, honestly. Add on to the fact that these are two weight-based abilities that you're going to be using. And while Duraludon's in its G-Max form, weight-based mechanics don't even apply to it. One thing that we do need to talk about, though, is the move pool that Duraludon has. Because I look at it and I'm not super impressed but it covers everything that you really wanted to i mean steel hits your fairies that your dragon type moves have no effect on dragon is just a really good wide variety attack uh you have access to dark pulse which is very powerful because it believe it lowers the opponent's special defense when you're gigantamax which is very good for a special attacking set you have access to a couple other options ground electric moves um fighting moves your physically defensive move like uh body press is nice as well but it basically covers everything you need to without going overboard. So what did you think about Duraludon's move pool when you've used it? Yeah, honestly, Duraludon, its move pool isn't great, as you said, but I do think that it is pretty solid overall in being able to hit the things that you need it to. Like, its dual stab is very strong. Uh, Max Steel Spike is a phenomenal move to be clicking with Duraludon because it boosts its, uh, gives itself a defense boost. Um, and it just makes it very hard to revenge kill. G-Max Depletion, its signature G-Max move, is pr 
pretty bad. Uh, it's, it's bad. <laughs> like, its opponent's PP is reduced by two points. That's it. <laughs> two points only. Uh, there's another move in the game called Spite, a ghost type move where if you click it, it's uh, the opponent's PP is getting reduced by four. They couldn't have even matched that. They couldn't have made depletion reduce your PP by four. No, it's only two. Um, but regardless, it's still a very powerful attack that very few mons outside of like fairy and steel types resist. So we get to steel types as a typing that resists both of Duraludon's stabs, and that's where you have stuff like max lightning and max darkness that can hit those mons at least for neutral damage. And then you also have uh, a niche option in max overgrowth uh, for hitting mons like uh, Gastrodon and Seismitoad that are very defensive, but they're going to take four times super effective damage from uh, max overgrowth. You know, I will say it's unfortunate that it doesn't get fire moves. Um, Steel and Dragon Hat, it actually hits pretty much, what, I think it's only 55 mods. I'm actually looking at it right now. 55 Pokemon aren't hit not very effectively by Steel and Dragon type moves. If you add fire on there, everything is hit super uh, neutrally at least. So that's a pretty big change. Uh, it sucks that it doesn't get a flamethrower, a flame burst even, or whatever, uh, but at the end of the day, maybe it was for the best because Draladon does have really high special attack and Dark will get the job done. I think only six Pokemon are actually uh, resisting the combination of Steel, Dragon, and Dark, and it's like Lucario, Ponder, and Bisharp. Basically, with Draladon's coverage, you hit what you need to, and that's pretty much it. I should add on, if you are running a physical Draladon set, then you can hit Steel types super effectively with max knuckle based off of uh, brick break or max quake based off of stomping tantrum um they have they, uh, they have uh, nice secondary effects as well because max knuckle will boost your attack for a physical attacking set and max quake will boost your special defense which can help to Raladon live uh, a lot of hits that it otherwise might not be able to one thing i've noticed from you um and i like this set a lot you ran Choice Scarf G Max Duraludon because you want to take advantage of it before Gigantamaxes and then continue to do that once you get that doubling of your HP stat. I love the set, and to me, there's quite a few items that work really well for Duraludon. Um, not ones that are very common with other Gigantamax Pokemon I've noticed. I wouldn't rec really recommend a weakness policy considering it only has two weaknesses, so it's not the most common thing you're going to be hit getting hits with. Um, but it still has its merits, but Leftovers to me is the big one. Choice items and life orbs are what I would recommend. So what, is there anything else that you would like to touch on for items? Yeah, I agree with weakness policy being very uh, being a very niche option. Um, but if you are if you know that you're going up against a strong fighting type such as Conkeldur, that's going to hit you on the physical physical side, then weakness policy could potentially work out. I did run that one time when I was going up against uh, the likes of Girder and Excadrill. Uh, those ones being on your IBL mm -hmm. roster before you actually took over it. Um, and yeah, I've run Life Orb too. Um, I've run Choice Specs really, really good to, um, like, Specs and Scarf, being able to use Duraludon while it's not in G-Max form is super nice because um, even when you've locked yourself into a move, if you want to be able to switch up your moves, then you just click the G-Max button and, and you can click whatever move you want, like whatever move is going to hit your opponent the hardest. If you're looking for more defensive items, Salt Vest is really nice because basically the only non-attacking move that you would run on Duraludon most of the time would be Stealth Rock. So if you just have four coverage moves, then Assault Vest can be really nice to help you take those special hits and power up its really low base special defense. And then just Shooka Berries and Chopple Berries, I think, can also be very useful on Duraludon as well. We're both in a league right now where you can use whatever item you want on Gigantamax Pokemon. There are leagues that only use Pokeballs or, or no items at all or whatever the case may be. So make sure to adjust your team and your playstyle based on that. Now, when we say team, there are Pokemon that are really good with Duraludon that make it better and make it shine because you can't have a Pokemon do absolutely everything. And you have a team that has allowed Duraludon to be, what, number one in the kills in our league? I think, what, 17 kills, couple deaths? And what are some of the Pokemon that you have used to make it shine? So two months from my team that I want to uh, shout out that I think are great partners for Duraludon. Uh, one, I will say, is Arcanine. Uh, Arcanine being a very powerful fire type, it can help break the steel types that would otherwise be walling Duraludon's dual stabs. Arcanine can also resist Fairy, which, yes, Duraludon hits very, very hard, but because it doesn't resist Fairy, it doesn't want to be switching in, which is something you usually want your Steel types to be able to do, is switch in on Fairies, 
The Rallyon is never doing that. Another mod that I like on my team that works really well for it is Arachmanid because it provides sticky web support, which will basically make Duraldon be able to outspeed everything that takes the drop from sticky webs. And then you're just gonna be in a position to be able to mow down your opponent's team with its powerful attacking moves. It also resists fighting and ground, making it very synergetic typing wise with Duraldon. And it has an incredible special defense stat. I think it's like base 132 special defense or whatever. One of the mods that I feel pairs really well with Duraldon is Vickavolt, mostly because Again, like you said, with Araquanid, it resists the combination of ground and fighting, and it sets up webs. But Vickle doesn't just resist ground, it's actually immune to it with Levitate, which is fantastic. And uh, the other Pokemon that I thought you were going to mention, but you didn't end up mentioning, was going to be Rotom Mo. I mean, you said you said you're going to be able to mow down the competition, and you didn't mention Rotom Mo. That thing gets momentum, it gets defog, it, the big thing is, again, it's immune to ground, and ground is a lot more spammable than fighting is. And I feel like if you were to get a, a good ghost type on your team as well, then that'd be a really good pairing for Droudon as well. So now that we have covered items, move pools, teammates, pretty much everything, we're going to be ending up the video by asking, where do you think Droudon ranks in terms of the other G-Max Pokemon? If you had to give it a ranking from 1 to 10, where would it fall? You know, obviously I'm very partial to using Droudon, so because of that, I would given an 8 out of 10. My philosophy on G-Max mons is you want them to be as offensive as they possibly can, and Duraludon is very good at being one of the most offensive G-Max mons out there. I think it's really good. Um, it's also not the most expensive G-Max mon. Usually it's going to be in the middle of, of three G-Max mons tiers that you're drafting from. So while something like G-Max Hatterene that's been covered before is definitely very strong, it's it's got a higher special tax stat than Duraludon does, it's usually going to be costing you more points. So I think Duraludon is very solid in the tier that it is placed in most of the time. You know, I completely agree with you on your reasoning and your philosophy on G-Max Pokemon being hit hard, be fast, be offensive, and I'm the same way. To me, out of the four Pokemon we've covered so far, being Hatterene, Snorlax, Lapras, and now Duraludon, Duraludon is the second best. Um, in terms of G-Max moves, it is the worst, but that's uh, for another discussion. Um, I think that I would have to give it probably an 8 as well, um, maybe a 7.5, because again, it is in a lower tier. Um, its coverage isn't the best. It does have that pretty big weakness to special attacking moves, and I also feel like if it's a metagame without items on your Gigantamax Pokemon, then it really suffers a lot, than, a lot more than a lot of other Pokemon would, bar Snorlax that we already covered. So... That's my reasoning. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on about G Max Duraludon? Uh, no, I think we've I think we've covered it all. Excellent. Now I want to hear from you guys. If you're watching this video, comment what is your favorite or least favorite thing about G Max Duraludon or the G Max mechanic in general. I would love to read your responses. But that's going to be it for us now. Hopefully you've learned a bit more about how to use G Max Duraludon. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more competitive Pokemon content. If you'd like to vote on which Pokemon we'll cover on episode six, click on the straw poll link in the description or in the comments. The link expires in two days from when this video goes up, so make sure you get your vote in while you can. However, I really appreciate you coming onto the channel. Why don't you let the people know where you can find your channel? Uh, yeah, uh, at Platinum Howler on Twitter if you want to follow me there as well. Uh, I post a lot of uh, draft league videos, uh, whether it be I have one showdown league coming up in two, in two Wi Fi leagues after IBL is all wrapped up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to get into this post DLC meta that we're entering right now. Absolutely. And I, again, I do want to say that Heller has some of the most informative, entertaining, insightful content when it comes to draft league. He's really good at this game, so make sure to go and check him out because he definitely deserves more subs than he has and more viewers as well because, my God, he, he knows what he is doing. That's going to be it for now. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.